Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome all to the second edition of the Renewable Hydrogen Summit. This is amazing to see you all gathered here in Brussels. This is amazing to see also so much momentum behind renewable hydrogen, especially in those times. And there is no coincidence. Hydrogen is simply harvesting the power of the sun, wind and water. It gives more to the planet than it takes. That is why there is so much momentum for renewable hydrogen right now. Our summit takes place at a decisive moment for Europe. On the one hand, we see an increasing number of climate disasters. On the other hand, we see that the current geopolitical context has demonstrated hardly that Europe needs to cut its dependence on Russian fossil fuels. And there is one solution that has emerged to be the solution of those two challenges, energy security and climate change, more than any other. This is renewable hydrogen. This was very much at the core of Repower EU, published two weeks ago by the European Commission. The European Commission plans to roll out this solution faster than initially thought putting to the next level the ambition in the Fit for 55 package and its European Green Deal. Here in this coalition, we have the leadership. We have the technology. We are ready to invest. But there is one thing we don't have. Time. So today, we will hear from the doers those who are making renewable hydrogen a reality. We will hear their response to Repower EU, how they, in turn, they intend to turn the ambition into action. During the afternoon, we will have a deep dive on how renewable hydrogen is transforming the European industry. We will then discuss why renewable hydrogen is so important to increase our energy security in Europe. We will then have a good celebration all together with a cocktail reception. But before all that, I have the great pleasure and honor to be moderating our keynote session with very distinguished guests. First, let me invite on the stage Energy Commissioner Kadri Simpson. Please join me on the stage. Pleasure to have you with us. Then let me turn now to the chair of our Renewable Hydrogen Coalition, President and CEO of Iberdrola. Please join me on the stage as well. <laughs> Finally, I call the Vice Chair of the Renewable Hydrogen Coalition, co-founder and CEO of electrolyzer manufacturer Sunfire. Please have a seat as well. Thank you all for being with us today. That's a real pleasure. Let's jump straight into the topic. Um, dear Commissioner Simpson, Renewable Hydrogen received a very strong focus in Repower EU. Can you tell us with your words why Renewable Hydrogen is so important, especially today? I do my best to explain why it is so important. Well, as you remember already, 2020, when we presented hydrogen strategy, we prioritized renewable hydrogen. And uh, back then, there were two main reasons. One of those was, of course, that uh, this commission's um, flagship initiative is Green Deal. And uh, there are sectors where you cannot just electrify, uh, but we committed to become uh, climate neutral by 2050 and uh, cut emissions significantly by 2030. So uh, hydrogen 
green hydrogen, renewable hydrogen, gives us uh, solutions for these sectors. And on top of that, on 2020, uh, we were coming out uh, with a multi-annual financial framework, and on top of that, there was recovery plan and recovery funding, so that uh, member states um, could, um, could uh, emerge from COVID pandemic in the way that uh, jobs will be not be lost, but we guided our member states in the way that uh, more than 30% of these funds were supposed to be invested into climate-related activities, and uh, that was a moment where it was very necessary to guide them also towards investing into, uh, into uh, renewable projects and, and on top of that producing um, and using green hydrogen. Now the situation is different, of course. I think that since 24th of February, uh, most of us, if not all of us, are thinking that are we doing enough uh, to help Ukrainians to win the war, to prevail, to take back their um, territory and the right to choose their own destiny. And, uh, and um, that means that, uh, that we need to get rid of this uh, very dangerous dependency that we do have. We are very dependent on imported fossil fuels. Uh, Russia has um, too big share, even today, in our energy mix. And Repower EU was our plan how we will get rid of Russian imports. Um, it was uh, a dedicated plan, especially for gas. As you know, this uh, night, uh, our um, heads of governments, uh, they achieved agreement on uh, oil um, embargo. But gas needs more, um, more time, if we do have uh, time. This is not only our decision. And, and then, of course, where we can, we will replace natural gas from Russia with uh, green alternatives. Of course, we will also diversify our uh, supply routes, but uh, green alternatives such as green hydrogen is a wonderful and future-proof uh, um, alternative. And, and um, of course, you can expect that, uh, that there will be additional funding available on top of already existing one. And then we also um, made, again, not only short-term plans, but also mid-term plans. So, 2020 with hydrogen strategy, we already set, set targets for 24 and 30. Now we doubled our targets for 2030. And uh, we will produce here in Europe 10 million tons and we will import from our partners. So I think that this is also one of the deliver deliverables of this year's COP, that we will sign a special partnerships with our international partners. And, uh, and this is also one uh, work stream for us, together with Ukraine, because we have committed ourselves to help to rebuild Ukraine, and as you know, very well soon, they don't have this transit position anymore. They will not transit um, Russian uh, gas or well pipeline oil through Trushpa pipeline, but they have their own vast potential to produce green electricity. And uh, we mapped them as one of our key partners for hydrogen corridor in the future. Thank you, Energy Commissioner. So, Commission wants to accelerate very much the agenda for renewable hydrogen. This is also a huge market opportunity. I'm turning now to Mr. Galan. How are you leading this race? So, I, I, was, I was already commenting with uh, Commissioner before during lunch, that uh, I think even if we are a company with more than 130 years already in the energy sector, with, uh, since I joined the company 20 years ago, uh, we've been already the pioneers in renewable. Uh, I think uh, the terms how has been talked about the hydrogen three years ago was absolutely different with this today. I was already just commenting that uh, I had already a panel during the COP25 uh, in Madrid with my President Timmerman and with another people. And we're talking about green hydrogen as a way of storing electricity. Uh, with, uh, I, I, I was already uh, just arguing that uh, even that can be a solution, but that is not already the means, the most efficient means for storing electricity. 
there are ways like pumping storage or, or batteries, but for short period of time, which I, I mean in 70 years in my life in batteries and 20 years in the electricity. So I think I already shared my life <laughs> between both. So, and, uh, but I think that forced me to think about hydrogen. And I took already my CTO and said, please, let's try to dig a bit who is consuming hydrogen, how is produced hydrogen, which are the uses of that one, and what we can already do for already helping to decarbonize uh, the sector. And I think it's uh, another day, and the result of that one is that uh, uh, we are a company what we are very fast in the decision-making process. So, and uh, I was already in the, in the, in the video, uh, the CTO was already presented to the king, our first uh, large uh, hydrogen power plant. And he uh, was already saying to the king that during the, pan the, the confinement of the pandemic, we were already confined. And I phoned him saying, please, Agustin, go ahead. Let's uh, go ahead with that one. And he said the other day in front of the king that he was with COVID at the time. So a guy was with COVID. I, was, I, I don't know, of course, that he was with COVID, but he started moving on that one, and now I think it's a reality. So, but I, I, I think uh, uh, what I said that one, I think uh, I, I like facts, not dreams. I like results and not goals. I like targets, uh, because uh, 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 sometimes we are a bit lost. So, uh, and I think now what we need is to try to, the first phase, is to transform or to reconvert those sectors which are large consumers of hydrogen in green. Which are the large consumers? Refinery, uh, fertilizers, ammonia, and methane, uh, uh, methanol. So I think why instead of dreaming to make a pipe to connect the south with the north, the east with the west today, why we are not doing things for those which are today 90 million tons of hydrogen is already consumed, which is equivalent of 340 million equivalent tons of oil for generation for producing that one, emitting 900 million tons of CO2. Why we are not decarbonizing those ones instead of be dreaming how to interconnect whatever to make more pipes? So please, let's do that one. Where inside? Let's already for this one, first, let's make renewables in a hurry. In a hurry. Because green hydrogen is, I used to say, green electricity transforming gas. But first, we need green electricity. So I think if it takes five years to have already to build a power plant, uh, whatever, solar or uh, green or, or, or wind or whatever, so we cannot already make green hydrogen. Let's try to make renewables in a hurry. And let's try with these renewables, using the existing electricity grid to use already to produce inside of those ones which are consuming today. That doesn't mean that we have to make goals and to dream a bit more about the future. We are dreaming as well in thinking about the future, to make green steel, to make already transport. And we are making transport with hydrogen, Barcelona buses is with our own as well. Make. But please, let's try first to decarbonize those things which are today's using 90 million tons worldwide of gray hydrogen in green hydrogen. Using the existing infrastructures of electricity, for taking the le green electricity there, and making already uh, the renewables necessary for making that happen. Because the, uh, we need a huge amount of electricity for making the, your, your, your plan. 40 million tons of green hydrogen in Europe means, I don't know how many there are hours, probably 15, 20% increase of the existing con electricity consumption in Europe. So it means we need hundreds of thousands of megawatt hour, mega, 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 uh, megawatts of power installed in Europe. And for that we need faster and faster and faster and faster permitting. And you are doing very well with your new Repower for Europe because you understood. For many years, I've been called Mr. Permitting. So any time I met people of the, of, of the commission, said, no, Mr. Galano, they're permitting. Yes, yes, permitting. You know. So permitted. Let's go. But don't make dreams. I think if we start dreaming to make things, what is going to be the future? So no, please. 90 million tons of hydrogen today 
is already consumed using oil and gas. Let's first try to decarbonize that one, in, we make, but then, <coughs> then we start thinking to make already how we are going to make a pipeline between Cines and, Barce and Barcelona, so as well. But second step, and we are in Cines in Barcelona, so I think, <laughs> look at Miguel, because... <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much uh, for those words. So clear prioritization um, and let's focus on L renewable electricity <coughs> deployment. So that was the side of the renewable electric supply. Now let me turn to the electrolyzer manufacturers. Um, Nils, you're the CEO of one of the leading electrolyzer manufacturers. How are you leading this race? Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me today. It's an honor to uh, be part of this great uh, group of people here on stage. Um, and allow me, when um, I have the chance to sit with the Commissioner of Energy here on this stage, to tell a small anecdote regarding our company. <coughs> we created this company in 2009 uh, in the living room of a Berlin flat, two friends of mine and, and myself. Um, and in the first 10 years of the development of this industry, where hydrogen was still seen mostly as a fuel for passenger cars, which is probably the least interesting uh, application for hydrogen, um, our life support was the fuel, uh, fuel cell and hydrogen joint undertaking, which was strongly um, supported by, by your house, by, by DG Enna. Um, and hence, I think it's fair to say that our company is a bit of a child of the, the European Commission and, and DG Enna. Um, now, uh, fast forward 10 years from then, uh, I agree completely with you, hydrogen is now understood as an energy vector that will allow us to decarbonize the hard to abate sectors and we should definitely begin with the areas like refining, like ammonia production, um, potentially also the conversion to jet fuel and other sectors that are difficult uh, to abate. Now, um, in, this, in this new world and this new understanding of what green hydrogen can be used for, um, Sunfire is one of the, I would say, leading companies in this industry. Um, we offer two different products. The first one is a state-of-the-art pressurized alkaline electrolyzer, which, and I think that's a very important message, is ready to be deployed at large scale. This is a very conventional technology, very state-of-the-art. We offer the smallest units are 10 megawatt units, which you can uh, multiply 10 times or 50 times or 100 times, how many times you want. Um, to produce hundreds of megawatts or even gigawatts of, uh, of, of uh, electrolyzers and then eventually green hydrogen. Um, so this is the first uh, product which we offer at scale um, to industrial customers like RWE, uh, like Copenhagen Infrastructure Partners, uh, Enertruck and, and, and Neste and, and many others. Um, and the second thing we're doing is we're making sure that Europe stays ahead. So we're developing the so-called solid oxide electrolysis technology, which we believe is the next generation of electrolyzers. Um, and, and I think that makes us unique as a, as a startup that has turned into an industrial co uh, company offering those two products. Um, what do we do? You, you talked about the doers. Um, we have a signed contract backlog of 700 megawatt of, um, of, of renewable electrolysis projects. Um, this is uh, mostly for applications in the field of, of refining ammonia and, uh, and, and uh, energy utilities. Um, so some of the newer application fields for green hydrogen. Um, and um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that um, the, the biggest challenge is probably not so much to produce the equipment. I think the production is actually something which can be mastered quite well. I believe the bigger challenge is in the execution then at site, at the customer site, to fulfill the requirements of big industrial players. Um, and um, talking about production, um, we are currently in the process of scaling up to gigawatt scale. And again, just a small comment, one of the most beautiful things about hydrogen is that it very often combines the old industry with, with new innovative business models. And this is not yet public, but Sunfire produces in a contract manufacturing structure with an automotive supplier in a troubled area of Europe, will produce gigawatts of electrolyzers using trained people that have been building combustion engines to build the technology of the future. So I think, thanks to your support, um, this, is, this is a true uh, European success story. And last comment, the industry is ready, and the, the largest amount of companies in this industry, I see a couple of faces here in the room, the largest amount of, of electrolysis companies sits in Europe. So this is not just a big challenge, it's actually a huge opportunity uh, for, for Europe. 
Thank you very much, Niels, for, for those words. Turning back to you, Energy Commissioner Simpson. So in the end, when we look at things very bluntly, we do have seven years and a half uh, to basically move from a few gigawatts to more than 120 gigawatts and have renewable hydrogen massively used in those hard to electrify sectors. This is quite of an unprecedented challenge, uh, to say the least. Um, and we may wonder whether conventional policies will deliver the scale and the speed that we require. Um, so, turning to you, um, how is the European Commission thinking of using all its political power and policy tools, including unconventional tools, to reach the challenge that is ahead of us? Indeed, uh, as we just heard, uh, well, the global leadership is still here in Europe and we have to well, do our utmost so that it remains uh, so. Um, well, I think that um, from our perspective, um, we can do what we are doing best. Uh, Europe is uh, seen as a, um, a very attractive market because we do have a single market. And uh, if our international partners are well aiming us for something, then usually it is our regulatory framework. And, uh, and with our last year's proposal, our hydrogen and gas uh, market decarbonisation proposal, we aimed exactly for that, that we will set a regulations that are um, creating favourable conditions for hydrogen producers and consumers, that we will create a conditions um, that, um, that grant us fell functioning hydrogen market. And, um, and now I hope that, uh, that our co-legislators will do their work um, relatively fast so that we can uh, find a final agreement and, uh, and this, uh, this package uh, will be in place. What I already know is that our international partners are following us very closely. Uh, last week we had in Berlin G7 energy ministers meeting and uh, our Canadian, American partners and of course Japanese, they told that there is no point to start uh, creating um, your own single individual certifications if Europe is already uh, at the advanced stage. And instead, we should cooperate so that everybody um, will recognize the same standards. And well, I think this is a wonderful idea. We do our utmost well to uh, share our knowledge and expertise with our international partners. And, um, and of course, we also do understand that in this initial phase, um, European financial funds are also making a difference. So um, you can expect that there are funds available. Um, the wonderful uh, example that, uh, that there are some regions where highly skilled people will lose their jobs because of our green transition. But we have been committed through the just transition uh, principle that uh, we will help the national governments to bring new job opportunities to exactly these regions. So this is a, a bright example how somewhere in troubled regions where people are producing uh, combustion cars, uh, they already do see uh, alternative, uh, alternative job opportunities which, uh, which are future proof. Thank you very much. Turning now to you, Mr. Galan. Seven and a half years. Now, your response is Repower EU allowing you uh, to switch gear, to make projects bankable, and go ahead with your projects? Well, uh, I think uh, no suspicious of supporting the decision of the European Commission. I've been very supportive for many years, so I'm very supportive of FIFA 55. So uh, in all forums where I am, I'm always defending that that is the way to Europe. There are not many, many areas in which we can already have a, a leadership. Certain the FIFA 55 give us the opportunity and the, and the fact to become a leader. But I think the Republic for Europe is uh, what I call fit for self-sufficiency. So it's not only for decarbonizing, it's the opportunity of becoming already self-sufficient and they are already defining certain ways how to make that happen. So, uh, 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 in that case, I fully support you on that one, but always, always, always 
uh, I'll not be Ignacio Galan if I not ask for sense of urgency. So the time is over. The time is over. And I think we need to work in a, in a hurry. And I think the bureaucratic processes we are in, in many areas, everywhere, not only at European level, in the different member states, is such, which are already postponing and delaying the thing. So, uh, 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 when uh, to make already a, a photovoltaic, or a, which it takes a month to be built, takes five years to have the permit. If we go to a offshore, so it takes 30 years, 13. So our first offshore wind farm took 30 years prior to being already operational. So not only Europe, everywhere. So United States, we are already five or six years ago. And I think the first one is going to be ready by 2025, 2026. So, I, I think this sense of urgency is not much. So coming back to the hydrogen, the demand is there. So since the moment we make already this uh, opening, opening which is not in production because we're expecting the European funds for that one, is the opening but to show. But in the moment we show that this is already ready for opening that one, so I think there are hundreds of people which is knocking our door. They would like to decarbonate, they would like to help to decarbonate, they would like to use this green hydrogen. But for what, what is needed? So, uh, sorry for being repetitive, stable, predictable regulation. Re rule of law, market rules, not intervention in the middle of the way because of a, a, a special circumstances, which I think the special circumstances always is going to be a special circumstances. But I think I, I spend most of my time now in flying to Boston to talk with uh, to big with investors. So I, I, I think we need already uh, uh, clear rules in which they have not to make questions to us why you are making that one, if the rules can change or whatever. So I think that that's very important. <laughs> so uh, I think it's uh, something which uh, we have to insist on that one is we need as well to create and generate a market for hydrogen. So as we have already for electricity or for gas. And I think in this market, I think it's not easy to be built. I'm not the day by President Timmerman was said in Davos, to build the electricity market as we have today in Europe is not perfect, but we have a market. It took 30 years. So the gas market is not perfect. But it has already taken a lot of years as well. So let's try to start making a hydrogen market. Because within hydrogen market, there are a lot of things which can be implemented. I was commenting to you before. System of CFD system, we can already fix certain level of support depending on the price. But we need to generate this market as soon as possible. I think this, this thing is, is crucial for that. Because <coughs> I think the thing has been so well done in the 5th of 55, it has already mentalized the European industry and I'm a member of the ERT, which are industries for sectors, very many of those which are absolutely connected with fossil fuels. Full as all of us, we are supported the FIFO 55. We have already made a document saying we full support the FIFO 55. But I think we need already to establish this clarity on that one in market, 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 market. So, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Galan. Um, let's turn to the supply and basically the technologies that we need to produce the volumes that we want to see consumed uh, in Europe. Niels, can you and the electrolyzer manufacturing industry deliver the volumes that the Commission wants to see consumed? Um, so, of course, this is a, a complex question, um, but I think the, the, the basic message is um, that, that it is possible to produce electrolyzers at very large scale, provided that the conditions are correct. Um, we have today an installed capacity of around about 1.75 gigawatt, and very recently together with, um, I think it was DG Grow, um, the suppliers of electrolyzers in Europe, um, amongst other Sunfire, have committed to produce about 17.5 gigawatt of annual capacity per year in order to uh, be able to supply the ambitious target of 20 million tons uh, in, in Europe in, in 2030. Um, now, what I like to do when I talk about those gigantic numbers is to put that a bit into perspective. 
Um, whether this is 100 gigawatt or 120 gigawatt for Europe and, and the same amount outside of Europe, um, uh, the, the exact number doesn't really matter. What matters is coming from 0 0.5 gigawatt today or 0 0.2 gigawatt today in Europe, going to something in the range of 200 gigawatt or even more, in, is, is, is a growth which the wind industry has taken more than 20 years for. The global wind industry has taken more than 20 years to grow from, from that level to the level we, we aspire to achieve in 2030. So this is a, it's, it's a huge challenge and it's a huge opportunity, uh, which, which should really not be underestimated. Um, but, but I'm actually really positive that it's not the production that is going to be the, the real bottleneck. I think we need to focus on execution. I, need to, uh, I think we need to focus on permitting processes. I fully agree with what you said. I think this is something which is not yet understood well enough and will potentially become an issue. We need to focus on creating more renewable electricity capacities all around Europe in order to operate electrolyzers, not only uh, in the outside of, of Europe where there's a lot of renewables, but also more in the center of Europe. Um, but, but I think it is, it is definitely doable, but challenging. Now, um, one point which I, I must flag, which probably comes up in every of those uh, discussions, is, is the important projects of common European interest. Um, they were well meant. Um, at the moment, they, they seem to be delaying quite a lot of investments in production capacities. And I know that you're doing everything to, to get this done quickly, but uh, I, I think I, it's, it's just it needs to be stressed over and over again that we need to have clarity um, and, and the decision on the first projects quickly. There will be um, massive learnings in the upscaling of production capacities in the initial phase, and uh, we need governmental support uh, to, to get that under control. Um, our industry is A, capable and B, willing to invest. Um, and, and I think this is something which is very, uh, again, unique. We have on the one hand side the political targets and the will to increase capacities. We have the industry side which is willing to invest. And now what we need, um, and, and this is just from the wording where I maybe disagree a tiny bit with you, I think you, you mean exactly what I also said. The demand is not there yet. The problem is the market mechanism is not there yet that creates the, the big amount of demand. That's exactly what you meant, I'm, I'm sure. So this is what we now have to focus on. Then the industry will be able to, to deliver on the production side and the industry will be able to execute and operate those projects and bring the molecules into the industry. I'm convinced of that. I have to clarify this point. I absolutely yeah. agree with you. I think there are many, many people ready to decarbonize and to use hydrogen. I agree with you. But I think we need to really clear rules. Yeah, exactly. So I think people is ready when they say market is there, the people is demanding, but they would like to say yes. Who would like to make but? But? Who would like clear rules, how that is going to work, et cetera, et cetera. But, but please. So we your, agree on the same terms. Yeah. To your point, what exactly is missing at the moment? So I, I think I was insisting hydrogen is renewables. Hydrogen is a, a, a infrastructure of create electricity grid with power enough for generating that one inside. So, but, but I think, uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, Europe is already putting uh, less than half per annum of the megawatts required for achieving the target of the carbonization of Europe. And it's not the European Commission guilty for that one. It's that every uh, member state which is already taking longer all these processes permitting because I think you see most countries, there are dozens of hundreds of thousands of megawatts of ready the demand of permitting that one. And, 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 and they are, for many reasons, we are cracking the whatever is not already moving uh, enough faster. So I think if we would like to make hydrogen, first we need to really green electricity. So uh, I, I think it's obvious, but it's not obvious. So I think you have a wonderful electrolysis. I'm very pleased. It's going to be, they're going to make very large electrolysis. They have already two technologies with both of them. We are testing both of them, each of them that advantages, et cetera, et cetera. It's a great opportunity for Europe to have already a very large scale industry of electrolysis. Not to happen to us, we have already happened with the solar panels. All this, we have all these positive things, but we need green electricity to make green uh, hydrogen. So uh, if we have green electricity and we have already 
90, I don't know how many tons in Europe, but probably uh, dozens of millions of tons of consumption. So uh, we can already decarbonate those things. If we have green electricity, we have the electrolysis, we have people already to make that one, and I think they are already a target in Europe for making that happen. And what we need already is to define the support and to accelerate the process. But in between, if any time you are making already renewable takes longer, or if there are any circumstances in which, because of we are passing through a crisis, which always there are crises, I've already passed through any crisis in my professional life, so I think <laughs> that happened. So, so we change the rules. So when you go to visit the investors, start making questions. And when they make questions, they start putting difficulty for funding or finance, financing. No, they're putting more expenses than one. So uh, let's try to provide stability, predictability, as, and, and facilit or facilitating all the process. For those, for yourself, for already uh, use your technology for making hydrogen. For those which are making already the wind turbines, for making the wind turbines, and for those which are making the racks because the solar panels is coming from elsewhere. So uh, to make that happen. So, uh, but, but predictability, stability, and agility of the permitting. Facilitate the access to renewable electricity. I think this is a key notion we've got to touch upon here. Um, we talked about financing, we talked about creating the demand, creating the stability we need, but we still miss a definition for renewable hydrogen, which can or not facilitate the access of renewable hydrogen. Nils, turning to you, is it what is on the table facilitating, making it more workable for you to um, launch your projects on the ground? Um. Look, so I, the, the point that you are uh, touching upon, I think, is one that for some of the people who have heard me speaking before, I've, I think I've been talking about this since 2016. Having a, a clear mechanism that allows us to purchase green electricity through the grid from different sources is one of the major points that needed to be solved in order to unlock the full potential of green hydrogen. And um, I can only imagine from the sideline how incredibly complex this discussion must have been inside. So thank you very much that since uh, two weeks ago there is a delegated act in place which gives us guidance on, on how to do this. Now, um, I don't want to use this stage to, to uh, talk about my nitty-gritty adaptations that I would love to see maybe in a revision of that. Uh, that's, that's not the right place for this. I think that's a great achievement, first of all, that we have that. However, it applies only for the transportation sector as I understand it, and as you heard and, and you also uh, uh, see it this way, I know um, hydrogen is, is extremely interesting also in the, in the industrial uh, environment, so we also need a clear definition for that, and whether it's exactly the same definition or there's further adaptation needs to be seen. Um, but, but this was and still is the major point, how can we purchase green electricity, how do we do the greenhouse gas balancing for the molecules that come out of our electrolyzers? And I think we've taken a big step, um, this is good. Um, now, how to, uh, how to make this a commercial reality? Um, I, I want to look again a little bit at the analogy of the wind market. In order to, to be able to grow the way the wind industry grew over 20 years, what we now have to do in seven and a half years, it needed unprecedented support mechanisms in order to open that door for onshore and offshore wind energy. And um, I think it, it would be impossible for this industry to, to reach this kind of growth if we do not get unprecedented forms of support um, if, if we do not get the boldest actions uh, from the European Commission that, that can be taken at this point in time. Um, and and um, that focus very, focuses very much, although you asked about the supply chain, um, focuses very much on the demand side, because this is really where the bottleneck is. I love the ambition of turning 50% or 70% of the industrial hydrogen into green hydrogen. This is a, an amazing move. Again, I know DG Anna is pushing that, and, and let's see what uh, the Council and, and, uh, um, and, and uh, the Parliament are doing out of it. Um, but, but we need those, those clear demand-side commitments, this demand-side support, Carbon contracts for difference were mentioned by you. I think this is a great tool that would be extremely helpful in an initial phase. 
Um, so this is really now that we've covered the supply of electricity part and that hopefully we'll have the IPSIS in place soon. I think this is now really the element that we need to focus on to, to spur this initial demand that is so urgently needed in order to bring the 240 gigawatt online by 2030. Thank you very much, Nils. Now back to you, Energy Commissioner Simpson. You heard very strong calls and messages from our two leaders today. What is your take on that? Well, indeed, uh, I listened very carefully and, and uh, I was um, grateful that Commission, European Commission is not uh, well, um, guilty for all the difficulties uh, that, uh, that you face in the energy market, but, uh, but well, we are very much willing to be part of the solution and indeed to produce more green hydrogen, renewable hydrogen, we need significantly accelerate deployment of renewables. And as you know, well, I personally think that the most important part of this uh, Repower EU plan was uh, dedicated to permitting, because um, unless we will uh, tackle this issue, uh, there will be no uh, deliverables by 2030, but we don't have even time uh, to wait until 2030. There are some very promising developments already. Well, a couple of years ago, we presented offshore energy strategy, and then we foresee that by 2030, we will produce 60 gigawatts of uh, offshore wind. Um, two weeks ago, four member states, uh, Belgium and uh, Netherlands, um, Germany and Denmark, signed in Esbjerg uh, agreement that only four of them will produce 65 gigawatts. So this is more than we foresee only two years ago for EU 27. So this is something uh, that uh, allows us to believe that, uh, that uh, renewable hydrogen will be uh, very competitive. We already knew that it might happen by 2030. Now there is a, a reason to be more optimistic. And then, uh, then uh, your claim that there is not demand yet. So we are doing our best to convince our co-legislators that, that we have to introduce sub-targets well, for transport, for industry, and uh, by doing that, we will create uh, the demand. But of course, by doing that, we will also help uh, these sectors to decarbonize. Because uh, this is no secret that, that we do have some sectors where emissions are still growing, despite our rhetorics and despite um, all, the, all the other um, policy instruments that we have used. So, uh, so I think that uh, with that uh, positive note, I took all the well praise <laughs> and promised to do more, uh, and I'm really committed to do that. Thank you very much. Well, we are approaching the end of this keynote session, but perhaps we can have a last round for, from our two leaders, and perhaps starting with you, Nils. What is your one or two recommendation now? Because we know there is a train of legislative proposals on the table. What's your one or two recommendation? Um, so, so what I heard out of this discussion is, and, and that um, is, is something which I consider extremely positive, is that there is willingness to cooperate on all sides. Politicians, the Commission, want to achieve uh, gigawatts of, of installed capacity in Europe. We have the supplier side, which will definitely have challenges to scale up at that speed, but that is willing to commit billions of euro and is already committing billions of euro into the, the upscaling of productions and, and everything which is needed to fulfill the targets the Commission wants to have. And we're facing, interestingly, an industry um, that is very cooperative also to those smaller electrolysis companies that are trying to help us to grow, to establish the quality processes, to, to establish the contract structures that are needed to do this not in a full-fledged, I buy a gas turbine type of, of partnership, but, but acknowledging that this is an industry that has to stand up and where everyone needs to do its part to, to get that on an industrial level. So, um, and, and it's again something which I hear out of this discussion. So really my key, key takeaway and what we will focus at Sunfire on, on doing in the next month and, and years is, is to try and, and help in, in the discussion of how to really spur the demand and convert the targets from the political side the willingness from the industrial side into not only kilograms but megatons of hydrogen that need to come out of these electrolyzers in Europe every single year. Um, so the demand side spurring that is, is my key takeaway or my key recommendation that, that we have to work on that now together. It is one of the biggest uh, opportunities for Europe um, of, of the past decades that I'm sure of. 
So I think it's, a, I, I will use a word, which is dialogue. So you mentioned uh, how the, the European industry of uh, green industry has been developed. We were already uh, one of those where we are supported. So Gamesa at that time, it was Gamesa Aeronautica, and we were pushed already to make already with uh, experience. I think dialogue between uh, investors or utilities or whatever we like to invest in renewable, industry, electrolysis industry, to see how the thing can improve the things, governments and European Commission. So we, I think, is a new sector which uh, is a great opportunity for Europe, uh, not only for decarbonizing, but as well to diminish our external dependency of fossil fuels. Uh, and I think uh, 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 we have to do all the necessary for avoiding, for providing this dialogue, this stability, this predictability, avoiding the intervention, uh, uh, which as well, they will help as well in the permitting process. We know what things have to be done. I think uh, we know which are the difficulties. I was commenting to you the another day conversation with one of our uh, political leaders on that one. I, I know the rural world and I know how the rural people is performing because I've been, I agree with this rural area. So uh, I think we can already give some, some ideas about that one. And as well, to define as soon as possible the public support for that one. So I think to define the mechanism, I, I think we are not talking about trillions of euros or billions of euros. Probably the support is, is much, much, much lower than we have already spent for supporting renewables in the, in the very beginning, much, much less. But I think we have to talk about present we have to talk about absolute terms, which is not much. When we talk about the numbers in the first phase for decarbonizing the existing ones. And what we decarbonize the existing, the existing uses of uh, hydrogen. So probably uh, the, 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 the system will be enough competitive for making another thing as well. So uh, I think there are areas like uh, green steel that we are in, uh, in involved in all those projects. So the amount of of money which represent per car to use green steel or traditional steel is peanuts, peanuts. So, and, and, and I think, but I think first of all we need to create, to generate this critical mass. And this critical mass is dialogue between those ones we make in electrolysis, those ones which are already uh, investing in renewable, those ones which are ready to invest in green hydrogen, the uh, European Commission and the local authorities for already creating this already atmosphere to be a, to attract the investor to move already in this direction, but uh, I, I think your target is achievable. So it's achievable, and congratulations for Repower for Europe as well, because we can already become absolutely self-sufficient. The American 20 years ago decided to be self-sufficient. They are self-sufficient, and they are exporting energy to us now because they decide they will not be continue dependent on their countries. Why? We Europeans, we cannot do the same thing. Why not? So. I think this is a, a very strong way to finish this conversation. Energy Commissioner, thank you again for being with us today. Mr. Galan, Mr. Aldag, thank you very much for, the, for your leadership today. We will now move to the next session, session one on transforming industry with renewable hydrogen. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.